Hey everybody, welcome back to Dakota Does Dressage. I have been dying to make this video because this is the haul video from Quarter Horse Congress when we went the end of October, but also just a couple of extra things I've bought online that I just couldn't resist. So I've compiled it all into kind of one big horse haul video and it's, this stuff has been sitting in plain sight in my living room for at least two weeks and it's been killing me to not open it and take a peek at things. So let's get started with the first thing that I actually bought online before we went out to Quarter Horse Congress and that's a set of reins. Where are they? In here. If you've been watching my videos of my tests and my rides, I've been riding in split reins. That's all I've owned up until now are split reins. And since I'm riding with a shorter rein and more contact, I've noticed they're really, really long, like almost touching the ground when I'm on him and actually have my reins short enough to try to get him on the bit. So I've been interested in buying some loop reins that, I, that are legal to use for the WDAA shows. And there aren't too many options out there that I'm aware of, to be honest. So the, I, I, I think it was during the WDAA World Show in September, I was streaming, watching the stream online, and I saw something about uh, Stacey Westfall has a line of some tack with Weaver, and she has Western Dressage Reigns. So I got online, I ordered those, those have arrived. Here they are. And they're much thinner than my split reins, much thinner. <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be hard to get used to, but there is a, a buckle end so my split reins either have the end that's a rawhide tie or some of them are like the quick change ones. I gave him some treats, so I think he's just trying to suck up and get some more treats. We're doing some carrot stretches in his stall. Am I delicious? Luckily, he's, he's not a biter, so I'm not worried about getting nipped. Not gonna say it couldn't happen. But here we go. So these have the buckle ends on both end and then a buckle here. And there's only one hole, but I guess you could add holes if you really needed to shorten them up. But there we go. This, they're so thin and light. It's gonna be hard to get used to. Probably oil them up a little bit. So we've got some reins. This book. 101 dressage exercises for horse and rider. I already own and have started using 101 Western dressage exercises for horse and rider. It, it looks almost identical to this, the way it's set up. I'm sure it's by the same company, um, publishing company. Not sure about the, like who actually, okay, this, this name, which I cannot pronounce, Jack. Aristotle Bayou, Balu, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll put that up on the screen. Um, I think did the other book too. So this has some great exercises in it. There was like a book place set up at Congress. I'm sure you can find this other places. I know the dressage one, the Western dressage one, they're both dressage, but the Western dressage one I have, I bought from Amazon. So I'm sure you can find it in other places. and. Um, this, this is just gonna have some great exercises for us to try to work on our suppleness, our contact, our everything, <laughs> it all needs work. So like this one I just opened up to, exercise 11 is looseness, walking ground poles with bending. That already sounds like something I wanna try. But I think we're gonna work through the Western dressage book first and then I'll, I'll look into these exercises maybe over the summer or even next winter, but I thought I might as well pick that up while it was right in front of me. Um, I forgot that I'm wearing something I got out at Quarter Horse Congress. This Ariat sun shirt, it's got this Serape 
motif to it, design, pattern, whatever you wanna call it. Thought that was really cute. It's gonna be nice to layer under jackets and things. Like today we've got a really rainy day. The horses are all inside. And you know, it's on uh, kind of in between being cold and being warm. And if your barn is like my barn, on top of the hill, it's always windier and colder, but then when you go like down the hill or you start to ride, you warm up and you wanna take that jacket off. So always having layers is a great thing when you're around horses, you're gonna need them. So this is also area. it's a nice little beanie, has the same color scheme as the Serape top, so nice little matchy-matchy thing going on. I don't know if I wanna wear this to the barn though. Like, you have that stuff that you just tell yourself you're not gonna take to the barn to keep it nice, but then you can't resist wearing it there. So I'm gonna try to keep this one nice and say it's a, an in-town only hat, not, not a barn hat. Even though it does match the Serape top I'm gonna wear to the barn, we'll see how, how long I can make that promise last. Okay, so even though I bought the Stacy Westfall reins before I went to Congress, because I really didn't think I'd find anything out at Quarter Horse Congress that could be used for Western dressage, but I did find a pair of just leather loop reins at J.R. Wanger's, and these are probably more for like roping. I don't know if it says on, no, it just says custom tack, so. Um, but these don't have any buckles on them. It has the, the rawhide attachment here to the bit and no buckle in the middle, which is not a big deal. They're also really thin, a lot like the Stacy Westfall reins. So I don't know if that's just a thing that Western dressage reins are a little thinner made or loop reins are thinner made, but I like the thickness of my split reins. So I don't know if anyone's out there making loop reins in the thickness of split reins, let me know, I might be your next customer unless, oops, sorry, unless I get just really comfortable and, and decide to stick with these. Okay, so other things that I have in here. I, let's do scarves next because I found this orange scarf. And you know, I've, I've been loving wearing a scarf with my outfit. Now the other scarves I have are a lot smaller than this. So the size was a bit like, well, that's different, but I've seen a lot of other looks uh, from people where they're doing the wild rags. They're pretty big scarves that, you know, basically cover all the front of them. The ones I've been wearing kind of tie and, and have little, little ends that come out. But I saw this, open it up so you can see the full pattern, it has a carriage motif to it, cream, teal, orange. I loved all of those colors and like a burgundy kind of pink in there too. So I, everything I was seeing that was orange, I was falling in love with. And I don't think I own much of anything that is orange in my house, in my personal apparel, like, I don't know if this counts as orange. I, so, so orange is kind of a new color in my color wheel and I'm really loving it, I'm here for it. So decided to go ahead and buy that. And I have a saddle pad obsession as many horse owners do. And I went to Congress thinking, I'm gonna get a teal saddle pad I love teal on him, I love teal on me, and I think teal looks good with the tack that I have because my tack is kind of an orange color. Orange and teal just kind of work really well together. So I was thinking teal, but then I was seeing all this orange and I was like, I think I might want some orange in the saddle pad. So anyway, scarves are kind of like buying a saddle pad as far as all of the colors and the patterns go, uh, getting the rush from that, but much cheaper. So if you're ever like thinking you wanna freshen up your look, but maybe you don't wanna drop a couple hundred dollars on a saddle pad, 
just pick a new scarf that matches what you already have. And maybe that will kind of alleviate the need to spend some money on something you don't necessarily need. But also, if you just want the pad, just buy the pad. Okay, I did get some other scarves because I actually got a $25 Amazon gift card um, that I had forgotten about. And I'm like, I should use that. So I bought some scarves on Amazon and I haven't even opened them yet. So this one is red and black. And I, I did think about the pads that I have when I was buying these. So I've got the pad that I, I did my, uh, one of my August tests in and then I rode in it again, I think for my October test has some red in it. So I thought this would be a, a way to get that pop of color elsewhere. It's not a ton of red. Where's the, the end that I opened? Here it is. It's all come in these plastic pieces. Okay, this feels a lot thinner than this orange scarf material wise. And it is a bit smaller, but it's got this paisley pattern and some red, some black. Don't freak out, please. <laughs> He's pretty good um, with stuff like this. And there's some maroon in here too, and some cream. So all really, really pretty colors that I think will look definitely great with him and I think I can probably pull off too. You like that one? That's a pretty one. You're gonna have to do some modeling later. I haven't even opened this one yet. Oh yes, okay. So the first pad I wore in June was that blue, black, gray, white, and blue pad. And that came with a sh that blue shirt and um, one of those black and white scarves that I was wearing, which I quite like, but I thought a way to change up that look could be black pants, a white top, the black, blue, and white pad, and then go with a blue scarf instead of the blue shirt. So in my search, I found this one, which seemed really unique. I wasn't seeing a lot of blue scarf options. It was a lot of pink, um, which I love pink, but blue was a bit harder to find. So this is a big one, wow. Floral pattern has some interesting geometric shapes in there too. Some dark blues, light blues. That's gonna be really pretty. You like the red one, don't you? See, I think blue is more of my color, but red definitely looks good on you. Okay, and then this one I loved when I saw it and thought that will go with literally anything. Doesn't really matter what pad I would wear because it's very neutral, it's black and gold. There's some red in there too. So this has like the hunt whip motif on it and some chain, some suns. You might even need to wear this like outside of showing, just, you know, going to Walmart in my, my fancy scarf. But I really like that. That's gonna look. So, oh, you're not a fan. What do you think? You're a red kind of guy. Okay, well, so I am planning to do, as I shake these at you, I am planning to do something around pulling together your show look. Not that I am a fashionista and will have the most glamorous outfit in the show pen, but I think it is really fun uh, to look at how you wanna present yourself, the colors you wanna wear, how that matches your horse. And I've been seeing a lot of those questions on the Facebook pages for Western Dressage that I follow. And I'm a pad collector, I'm a scarf collector now. I am starting to pull together my like 
my vibe, my identity <laughs> for showing. Uh, so I know some people just kind of feel overwhelmed and don't know where to start. I think my style's maybe a little bit more on the conservative, but glam, like if I can bedazzle a shirt collar and some cuffs over winter, I think that could be a video that gets made. Um, we'll see if I have the time to do that, but at least pairing your, you know, picking your colors, pairing it with the other parts of your, uh, your outfit, I think I could, I could at least get people started with that in a video. So stay tuned for that this winter, or if you have any thoughts and, and comments, suggestions, put it down in the comments below and let me know if you'd be interested. So this was a pretty lucky find for going the end of Congress and really trying to find any head stall because um, it was pretty picked over when we went. I didn't think about that on the first day when we were shopping. I was like, come on, where's all the good stuff? But we went the last weekend and it had been picked over. So this is a head stall by Circle Y. We saw a lot of beaded head stalls while we were there. And I can't say I love this stripy motif. I feel like if I'm gonna ride on camera in this, that's gonna look different. But I love it in person. And I, again, was just drawn to like the red and the yellow, the, the fiery colors, maybe cause it's fall. Um, one thing we did though, I bought this and then we went right over to this place that was set up with some of these custom buckles and I replaced the buckles on it. So these have kind of a pewter finish and then a champagne-ish color, yeah, champagne color rhinestone and brown rhinestones. And I thought that looked really sharp and different. And you know what, maybe horse number two is gonna be a sorrel or a palomino because I think this would look stunning on a sorrel or a palomino really excited about having this head stall and the leather does feel like it's decent quality there was a lot of stuff there that just felt really cheap and they were expensive and i was like i'm not just gonna buy a head stall to buy a head stall if i don't really like it so this was a great find okay the last thing i have well it's kind of two things but they go together so the last thing i bought at quarter horse congress was this bag for a show pad. Cause right now I've been just keeping mine in like the little plastic bags that they're sent in from the supplier. And that's okay, like they've been working. The one has ripped, so this was just needed anyway. Um, so this is a good quality one. It's got a nice zipper and a little window here so you can see what pad is actually being kept in here. I might need to invest in a few more or find a way to, to store them. But this is to house a new pad in my collection that I have right over here. And I have been dying to open it since it came in the mail. Okay. So this is my first time buying from this saddle pad maker, Saguaro Show Pads. I've followed them on social media for a long time. I've always liked their designs. I, I wouldn't say they're crazy expensive and um, like this is maybe slightly more expensive than some of the other pads that I have, but I don't think their designs and their use of colors can be beat. Like I, I feel like I'm gonna be a lifelong customer if the quality comes through when I open this thing up and look into it. So I was saying teal was what I was looking for out at Quarter Horse Congress. That's what I had in my head. I'm gonna go buy a teal pad. Did I buy a teal pad? But I was loving orange. Ugh. And I ended up buying this pad called Nirvana. And it is not teal. <laughs> not teal at all. It is 
yellow, orange, blue on a black base. There's some gray in there. It's pro something I probably would have scrolled right past normally and thought I would never buy that pad, but it was so different. Let's open her up and see. Okay, so it does feel really nice and thick. And just looking at the weave, I'm not noticing any puckers or pooled wool. Looks really well made. There's like just a, a, a spare pink, pink one over there. Pink would look good on you too. I might have to add that to the list. Need a teal one still. And I need a pink one. And then it, they've got these little leather wares. There's a, a sticker on there, which hopefully that comes off clean. Oh yeah, that'll come right off pretty clean. All right, so that's it for the haul. That's everything I got. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting us on this journey. If you're liking the videos, make sure you give them a thumbs up, subscribe if you're willing. I, that would really help me out. I would appreciate that so much. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.